everybody are we off mute chris all right we're here we are 
uh, Unlocking the Cage. This is the podcast where we are uh, here to watch and rank every single one of Nicolas Cage's 100 plus movies. I am your host, Meg. I am here with Chris Madden. Hello. How are you? Me? <laughs> so far. How are you, America? How are you, America? How you doing, How is- America? Uh, we have uh, very exciting news today in that Chris made us a soundboard. I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I haven't figured <laughs> I haven't figured out the appropriate way to use some of these yet, but um, I'm excited to play with this. All right. So uh, if you are listening to this on the podcast form, this is recorded live on Twitch at man- uh, sorry, twitch.tv slash managers comedy every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific. If you are listening to this and you're like, I'd rather see the visual form of this. You miss seeing our faces. Go to youtube.com slash managers comedy. Today's movie is 2007's Next. Today's guest is Renny Rivas, who is an actress and comedian in Los Angeles. Her podcast is called Ring Ring. And I've been told to say that it is totally tits and I believe it. Let's bring out Renny. It's totally tits. It's totally yeah. tits. <laughs> Hi, kids. It's totally tits. I don't know. <laughs> That's what the you? kids are saying these Good. days. Good. How are you? <laughs> all right. We've all got a brown liquid of choice. Brown That's liquid right. of choice. Brown What's liquids. everybody drinking? I'm drinking uh, river water. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is uh, iced tea or is it? Mm. Mine is a Verna. I was, I was like, I want something that's boozy, but not too boozy. Oh, an Italian? It's really it? good. It's so good. It tastes like like adult Coke. Elevating oh, the well, show. It's a different kind of adult Coke. A different kind of adult <laughs> yeah. Coke. Adult Coca-Cola. Um, all right. So we're here to talk about the movie next. Um, <laughs> this this is an interesting episode. I'm so uh, Rennie is the first person I think who has come to us and said, I will do whatever you make me do. And oh, oh, her, oh, oh, back it up. What she'll watch, whatever Nick Cage movie we ask her to watch. That's true. That is you said, better a description of what we actually I'll said. do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> um, I'm so, not watching the eight millimeters movie. Stop it. Yeah, <laughs> no, Don't that was one... the real one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh God! We're gonna send you a locked box, and uh, <laughs> make sure you watch it twice so you remember. We need you to infiltrate the underground porn industry of L.A. <laughs> and I'm find, yeah, yeah, basically. Wait, I'm gonna try one. I'm gonna try one. I had a boner with a capital O. Is that from Eight okay. Millimeter? <laughs> no, I think that's from um, Wild at Heart. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. when i think boner with a capital o the first thing that comes to my mind is the muppet show when they're in the o in the muppet show and they come out and go with the symbols i think boner instead of the anyway with animal in the o that's my childhood i don't know what's going on all right all right so um so anyway so we so renny said uh you guys picked the movie for me and i said chris which movie should she do and you said she do next and why? I want to know why, Chris. No. You suggested what? a movie, and I said, next. Oh. <laughs> and then you were like, oh, all right, Rage. And I was like, don't get mad at me. <laughs> and then you were like, uh, National Treasure. I'm like, I know Reddy's a National Treasure, but we have to pick a movie. <laughs> this went on for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris could go on further if we let him. Uh, and then I said jujitsu, and then you punched me in the face. Uh, it's, it's, it's losing the thread. We only need three of them. No, I saw this movie a long time ago. I remembered it as being a very fun movie, but also just like a premise that is just like, this could be an amazing superhero movie if done with like the right people and the right, like, oh, yeah. you know? But And there was a lot of fun here, but they put Nick Cage in it, and there you go. <laughs> Um, all right. And so, Randy, you had never seen this movie before, right? Correct. Um, never seen this movie. And I appreciate that I was assigned this movie so much because it did not break the rule of bad. Like, a bad movie that's fun, 
good. This this was that. But I can't, I can't forgive boring. So this this was the opposite of boring, and I appreciate it. I have a I know I'm not supposed to announce when I do a soundboard thing, but I have a soundboard thing about being boring. Let's go. Let's go. I'm bored. Let's go. <laughs> I I think I'm gonna get more natural with it. I just need to get the kinks out. We o- we only had a few of those. I think one of them was USS Indianapolis Men of Courage. Mm. That was I'm bored bad. already. Oh, the title. Lowest rated movie on our yeah. list out wow. of 20, 21, 20. Wow. Yeah. That one was really rough. But then, yeah, I think a lot of Nick Cage's do have the benefit of the fact that Nick Cage is in them. So it kind of adds a little something to it to make it. Yeah. This yeah. one, I think just the premise was so fun and they managed to do some fun things with it that kind of kept you going. And you were like, all right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let me give you guys, before we dig into the movie, I'm going to give you guys a little background on this movie, um, (laughs) just because I'm sure that neither of you had any reason to look into this whatsoever. Um, So (laughs) it was 2007. It was directed by a guy named Lee Tamahori, who uh, directed Die Another Day, the James Bond movie, Uh, Along Came a Spider, which I've heard of, and Triple (laughs) X, State of the Union. Nice. Um. And uh, interesting fact about the director, and I and I want to tell this fact, and I don't mean it in a shamey way. I just want to clarify this, but just in a factual way, this They're is what 600 happened. 600 pounds. No, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. he might be. I don't know. Okay. But he uh, right before this movie came out in 2006, the director was arrested in Los Angeles at Santa Monica Boulevard um, because he entered an undercover policeman's car while dressed as a woman and offered to perform a sex act in exchange for money. The hey, director. Yeah. What? The director was was the wait was the police officer? No, the, the dir- director was the the guy who got arrested. Wow. Have times gotten so bad? There, there's not enough big budget blockbusters to make a dollar. <laughs> they the- gave him seventy eight million dollars to make this movie, and he needed a little extra. A little Man, chain. I mean, I guess we're assuming that times got bad. Maybe like he's just like, this is what I do for fun. Maybe this movie drove drove him or they to do such work, you know. <laughs> so this this is the year before the movie. So I I do wonder oh, before if, the movie. Okay. Yeah, it's the year before. I wonder wonder whether that. I mean, was this while he was filming? Like, like what? I just I'm very curious how this arrest had oh. reverberations on the movie. I just thought that was an maybe interesting fact. It was a dare, or maybe it was. A role playing gone awry, like he got in the wrong car. I feel like it was probably just his his thing, you know, and or he their, just happened on a cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm assuming his pronouns are he, based on his Wikipedia page, but okay. I cannot confirm. Man, well, maybe that's why the the plot got so um, blue lives blue lives at the end of of next. The Very <laughs> true. Maybe that's why it took a hard left turn into the police precinct and uh you know put on their militia gear and supported the cops like that <laughs> that was such a tone change tone shift a like- interesting fact about this that i uh will tell you guys is that this movie had a major rewrite when it was originally written and the first draft was very can you imagine i know very anti-authoritarian yeah, very, well, very anti cops, and then they just like rewrote it. We're like, well, what if the FBI are the heroes? Rennie nailed oh my this. God. Rennie nailed this. This is what I know. He, he had to do this as his public service from his arrest. He had to change yes, the ending. Yes, this was clearly stated in in their house arrest terms. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in your next anti authority. That's like, anti authority movie is gonna yeah. Maybe he couldn't get cooperation of the LAPD. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm overthinking this. I think you're overthinking it. All right, one more fact about this, guys. So, uh, oh, no, two more facts. All right, quickly. Uh, it was made for seventy-eight million dollars. It made seventy-six million dollars. So uh, <laughs> almost there. A rare could have been worse. Break-even situation. Not great. Almost <laughs> seventy-eight million dollars is a lot of money. That's a big budget. A Holy shit. For this movie, I'm actually surprised because this movie consists of a lot of people walking around warehouses, like just walking. 
Um, it is an adaptation of a Philip K. Dick story. And I want to read you guys a little brief description of what happens in this story, just so you can see how loose of an adaptation it is. Yeah. Um, the story is called The Golden Man. Um, a couple, so like a man and a woman, are part of a government agency that are tracked with tracking down and sterilizing mutants. The Golden Man is a feral young man named Chris with gold colored skin who does not appear to be sapient, but possesses the ability to see all possible outcomes from every single, any single action. Unknown to the agency, Chris turns out to possess another power. His golden skin acts like a lion's mane and allows him to seduce members of the opposite sex. <laughs> this is how it ends. Chris influences the, the woman and the couple into freeing him and then impregnates her and makes his escape. But wait, how does a lion's mane how is the function of a lion's mane to seduce people? Is that what a lion's mane does? I don't look at a lion's mane and go. <laughs> I don't think it's meant for you, Chris. But why is it? <laughs> you don't. You don't spread like Nala when you see the <laughs> see the mane at the zoo. I'm trying to think of humans Lion. that have lion's manes. You know who I'm thinking of is uh, the guy who plays Aquaman. Oh, oh yeah, well he'll he'll make people spread like Nala. <laughs> For like many other reasons, not just his lion's mane. Did I did I freeze for you guys? Oh yeah, you froze. Oh, we got a That's frozen weird. boy. It's, it's oh boy. Up. All right, I'm gonna unplug my my, my uh, camera and then see if I can come back. Well, oh. good thing this is mostly an audio medium, so no one's gonna know she's frozen. I am uh, cracking up about his golden skin. <laughs> It's so weird because I I'm just cracking up because they've they've um, eschewed so much of the original story for the movie, but Nick Cage has a very dark tan, <laughs> and it's really noticeable. So is that some kind of remnant? Like the Miami spray tan was <laughs> was the middle ground? They made that... him like a golden god, kind <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah, but they gave him the. The uh, Miami Fitness spray tan with your membership, like, <laughs> and they gave him like that longer Nick Cage hair, like that weird long. Like, oh yeah, like old revolutionary style hair. So maybe that's his lion's mane. Is that like semi long? Exactly. Oh, I didn't even think about that. It is the the long hair and the spray tan was the costume department, the the makeup department's um inspired. You ever notice, like, in this movie, he, like, he doesn't change his clothes after a certain point ever? Like, he's wearing that same outfit for the rest of the movie? Like, he oh, has a tux on, yeah. and boom. I thought it was just two days, the whole yeah. thing. You're probably right, actually. Oh, well, now we have an extra Meg in the, uh... <laughs> Hold on, oh let me God. pull the old switcheroo here. Oh, uh, I don't know what happened there. There we Wait, go. Wait, I, I, you, I heard most of what you guys were saying. And... Occulties, we're okay now. Right. You were talking about his, 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 so, so I do think, so one thing that I heard is that the reason he wears that gold jacket the whole time is, in, is intended to be trip in tribute to the original story, the golden man. Amazing. I, I didn't notice the jacket at all. Just the spray tan, which is <laughs> very golden. Just to kind of, oh man, Meg froze again. Just to kind of no! get into this movie, like to get it just at the top of the film. Okay. I got to say something about this movie. Is I got to say it. The, the font they chose for the opening <laughs> credits was the same font as the seven movies. Like, uh, not seven movies, as the movie seven. It was like, yeah, that was strange. It was a strange choice. That's, that's what it was. It looked familiar. It was weird. And wrong. Like, like somebody was like, oh, I'll just get use this font. And it was like, why? Like, is this some menacing kind of font they used? Yeah. But again, it's very fitting because this movie had all these elements of a better movie. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh okay that 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 is reminiscent of a superior film okay <laughs> hey you're not frozen anymore i'm back guys what do you say we cut the chit chat a hole hey, hey. <laughs> i tried to use a quote <laughs> so all right that didn't really cage is a shitty vegas magician magician mentalist <laughs> uh in the frank cadillac show Named straight out of a song from Bruce Springsteen. Really? 
I just pick. I mean, that's a Springsteen esque thing. I don't Cadillacs. People named Frank. I don't know. I picture a guy. Yes. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> All right. I have to look this up right now because I really feel like, you know, you know, when like um you see the thing on Twitter where it's like an article that's like spiders, they can be your friends too. Don't be afraid of them. And then someone quote tweets it and says, did a spider write this? Yes. <laughs> like <laughs> watching this, I was like, did a magician write this? Like magicians, <laughs> they can be cool. <laughs> they can get ladies too. Can we, oh, should we play that clip or should we wait? We should wait to play <laughs> uh okay uh so far it does not look like anyone who wrote this is an actual magician ah man well there must have had someone consult it must have been someone who who had one of those boxes you get when you're a kid of magic tricks then... oh but the one of the guys who wrote this so this has three uh writers one of the guys who wrote oh, it really? also wrote i know right also <laughs> wrote die hard with a vengeance jumanji wow. con air armageddon what? gone oh. in 60 seconds hey those are good uh fun that's some good credits well this movie did have a lot of parallels to gone in 60 seconds when we were watching it yes it did have you yeah. seen that one renny not in a while but i'm not surprised it's from this one of the same writers yeah and he yeah. had that whole scene where he's in the car chase with the silver car and he kind of looked like he was you know the speedometer was going yes. <laughs> so all right, all right let's so he's he could see two bits of the future he, uh, you know, he lays low, stays under the radar. Uh, Pretends to be a magician that's actually doing tricks, but also, is actually. How lucky does he get at the top of the movie where he's like, what if I told you your necklace was about to break in five seconds? Like, that's like beyond stupid. Like, like whose what? necklace breaks on stage? That's a very <laughs> big he, That means he like went in his head and he was like, I'm going to go through the, every possibility of this audience. For anything that's going to happen when someone gets on stage and he so finds someone like oh that chick's necklace is gonna break boom bring her up <laughs> here and then it falls in her drink and then they cut away and then he's like check my pocket go in reach your whole hand into my pocket and her okay. necklace is in his pocket so like, I, I i took a picture of the tv screen in that and i i wanted to send it to somebody like you're <laughs> she's reaching you're her, can so you hold it up well right? fixed. <laughs> he's reaching her hand into okay. the pocket so fun fact, Chris, I, we, that woman, the woman who he reached the hand in the pocket, um, we've seen her recently in something else. Uh, that's a tough one. Okay. Uh, because she is Alice Kim Cage, who is Nicholas Cage's ex-wife. They were married at the time. Did you know that, Renny? You're nodding your head like you know. I'm nodding because I watched the whole movie and I thought, well, he has no chemistry at all with Jessica Biel, but that one hot Asian woman in the beginning, they had they had sparks in their eyes, and then I remembered his wife having looked like that woman. So I just googled it and went, "Yeah, is, <laughs> they that, fuck. is she Kalal? Yeah, is she Kalal's mom?" I his that's son? a good question. I don't know for sure. Okay, I. I'm going to guess maybe based on that. Um, okay. But so she also appeared. We recently watched the uh, little cameo that Cage has in Grindhouse. She was in that too. So we saw her recently. Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. are we going to, all right. So the, something that happens with is he, he's gambling and uh, he's going to cash out and he knows that someone's going to shoot up the place because he can see two minutes in the future. And <laughs> Instead of like doing what he does in the diner and like going through all the possibilities to find the one where he doesn't have to fucking escape in a car chase, yeah, he picks the one where he has to escape in a car chase. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense, like knowing the rest of the movie. Uh, then he'd never have any fun, Chris. <laughs> he was bored, <laughs> he was bored. <laughs> I'm sh maybe there was something else I'm missing here that like maybe he he knew he would get that car and so he was like I want that car. There were holes all over the script. Yeah. Oh my god! If you look deep enough into any of the holes, you can see the future. I mean, that's <laughs> the biggest hole is like Julianne Moore's like entire motivation at the top of this movie to find him. Like what? Yeah. We we see her with her with her colleague watching his show like that is there is so much i want to know <laughs> the FBI, how did they get to this point yeah the fbi Why? is fucked basically this yeah this 
these two FBI members are drinking their like two drink minimum at a terrible ma- magic show. <laughs> um. <laughs> there's a there's a what's it called a quote from this scene that I wrote down because it was so bad. Uh, which is where he guesses that this guy is from Korea by saying, "Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> You're a soul man." <laughs> like he could be so much more impressive with his abilities, but he's like doing. Uh, I guess that's the point. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's so bad. And Julianne Moore is supposed to be this like incredibly tough, like like uh like person who's like you know FBI special agent, all this stuff like that. Like the the, the dignity she has. You know, like the way she like carries herself, she must have felt like so defeated. Like, look at me, I'm sitting in this Vegas, desperate to find anything I could do, grabbing at straws, and it was just so weirdly played. And like, the whole situation didn't make any damn sense. It there were so been... many scenes we didn't see <laughs> to get to that point. Yeah, it, it would have been better if if Julianne Moore was the love interest and she somehow happened to meet him somehow and you know like instead of them hunting him down or i don't know i would argue that this movie would have been a lot better if jessica biel no offense to jessica biel but if jessica biel's character was not there and that there was a love connection between nicholas cage and julianne moore yeah yeah for a lot of reasons for a lot of reasons (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh i have a julianne moore fact that i have not had a chance to uh share on this podcast because we haven't done one with julianne moore but Mm. Guys, I have it on good authority from someone who has told me they're not, al- I'm not allowed to tell where they know this from. I don't know why, uh, but Julianne Moore wears a wig in every single movie she's in. Hmm. Even the ones where it's just like, oh, that's what Julianne Moore's hair looked like. It's all very expensive wigs. What? I thought that was cool. That is cool. That- I heard the same thing about Bill Murray, even <laughs> though he, he has, he has, very thin nothing hair it's still fake that's that's what i've heard wait is that a bit or is that true it's true oh my god well, it's, it's true based on a, a screenwriter i know who was in the room with bill murray said he was bald as an egg oh like, like that bald. Totally very bald yeah so he and just that, wears like a, a super receding hairline wig yeah like really well done fluff <laughs> that rules but, good for him whoa all right but julianne moore why that's that's the because the uh, so the reason I, i've heard is that because her yeah. ha- when you're in a movie your hair gets styled it gets dyed you know they do a lot of stuff to it and she just wants to keep her hair perfectly natural <laughs> okay. by putting a wig on top of it instead of doing any styling or doing any coloring it makes sense to me well, they did a great job on her hair Whoever got the CVS coupon for the nice and easy black number three um, for Nick's for Nick's hair. <laughs> Just, it's not it good. It looks like a Sharpie. <laughs> Some, somebody <laughs> went and cut up a black uh, one of those loofah things. A loofah? <laughs> you know, the scrunchy shower things. Went, yeah, went when it fell apart after a month, they're like, oh, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's put this on Nick Cage's head. Get some hot glue. <laughs> this yeah. is uh, yeah, 2007. I, I I have to. Oh, that's what I should check and see where in Nick Cage's career is this? Because I think that's mm. always important. I to, think this uh, is the beginning of the downslide. Like I think it was so getting too. there. I think this is. He had a bunch of back to back that seemed like they could have been good and then ended no. up being really bad. Like this is one of them. I think Knowing was around this time too, which is a disaster of a movie, but <laughs> like it had a, a bigger budget. And a good cast. Yeah, we got we got um well actually 2007 was Ghost Rider, which I feel like was <laughs> maybe a success. 2007 was National Treasure Book of Secrets. I think Ghost Rider was a bad one. That was a, another bad one. But then I think you're right. After this we get into Bangkok Dangerous, Knowing uh we do have Bad Lieutenant uh which and, and then and Bad then... Lieutenant Tokyo Drift, which is <laughs> so good. Is that like Bad Grandpa? What was Bad Lieutenant? <laughs> oh, this is a big one. It's like uh, bad this Santa. is this is uh, Bad Lieutenant colon Port of Call New Orleans is a, a game. <laughs> I know, right? Sounds like a video game. It's a Werner Herzog movie. Oh my god! Okay. And I guess Exhibit stars in it. I have not seen it yet. This is this is uh one of our maybe top three most requested movies. Oh, um, that's because coming he, up soon. it's so crazy pants. I've never seen it, but he has a it, he's very crazy in this movie. Um, well, so, guys, guys. Yes. Yeah. Take us back on track. Back Wait, on track. Hold on. 
Hold on. Hold Let me on. see. We cut the chit chat. A hole. All right. Thank you. So, all right. We he runs from the cops. Does his yeah. whole ninja thing. He's like hiding. It's very cool. Wait, I we got a fun. clip. Show us the clip. Show right, us the clip. We got a clip. We got a clip. Go I got this. Clips. This is a very boring clip, and I got this clip on purpose because it is boring. And this is <laughs> uh, post minority uh, report. Nope. Close. It's it's just I have to. Yep. Don't oh, mind, no. Chris. Don't mind. <laughs> it is every fucking I clip are we just... cycling through. Come on, Chris. I Come know. on. It's, oh, it's no. just not professional, guys. It's not My professional. <laughs> So you can at least see his outfit if you haven't watched this movie. One of his oh, yeah. two outfits in the film. Ruffled shirt, bad hair. Just so slick. He's right next to you. Ten dollar slots, aisle fourteen. I love this synchronized move with all of Boys to Men. <laughs> yeah. Look, there we shuffled as slowly as we could. Turn around. We He's right between you. Just this is so much of the movie is people like fast walking through different segments, different <laughs> like it's power really walking. A power walking. And so the reason I got this clip is because it reminded me of a much better scene that was also done before this, which is the scene from Minority Report. When have you seen that movie, Renny, where they go through the mall and there's like the balloons? It's the same exact premise, which the, one of the people could tell the future. So they're like trying to dodge people and they have to do it at the exact right time. It's the exact same yeah. thing. It's oh, much more interesting. Based on Philip K. Dick also. Ooh, good Philip K. Dick. Uh, all right. Uh, so he does this thing, and then we get to the best part of the whole movie. Fucking Columbo shows up. Best Wait, part. Uh, of the movie. There's there's a car chase before that where he hits he hits right the, before that <laughs> he hits the train, uh, but he's like, just kidding, didn't hit the train. Yeah, he hits a train. I wish I wish I got a clip of the train. Oh, crash. whatever. He hits right, that whatever. train, and then he he it's like, just kidding. I'm gonna go a little faster and not hit the yeah. train. That was a foreshadow of the ending. Like, oh. This thing, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. JK, not doing it. JK. Uh. So, all right. So he, he shows up in a garage. Weirdly, uh, his like mentor figure is played by Peter Falk, aka Columbo. And he just has one scene in this fucking movie, and that's it. He's exactly the same character Robert Duvall plays in Gone in 60 Seconds. Yes. It's the exact exactly. same okay. setup. It's a car garage, too. He's fixing cars for no friggin' reason. And then he's like, he's just holding a wrench like a, a Playboy <laughs> photo shoot. Like, I, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I got you two sandwiches. And he's like, Sam, that's twenty thousand dollars. Like, are they gonna explain us what the sandwich system they have going is? But no. Is it his dad? What is this? What is happening? Does he put- who is that? There, there's a lot of a lot of characters who have no motivation in this movie. Just no no explanation. They they no. really they really don't do over explaining in this movie, and I give them some credit for that because so many movies do. Yeah. Um. I, all right. The, one of the coolest things I think in the whole movie happens at this point. Yes, I think it's cool. Is when uh, Julianne Moore tracks him down, and they have the whole conversation that never happens. Yes, and um, that there's a couple scenes in this movie that are unintentionally unintentionally huge laughs. I think um, what one of them being this scene where uh, Nicolas Cage tells Peter Falk, uh, you know, can you give us two minutes or whatever. Like, can you give us a minute? Or he says, like, I'll give you a minute. I don't know what the heck it was. <laughs> but he walks away so slowly, it's like a, a sight gag. <laughs> it's a sight gag. It's like, I'll leave you. I'll leave you two alone. I really wanted him to come back and be like, and another thing. <laughs> Does she want a sandwich? All right. Nah. And they hold the camera on him so long as he's so like, long. Uh, like, well, we got Columbo. We might as well get him on screen as much as we can. As if to say, guys, this is the last chance you're going to see Columbo. Yep. Uh, 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 I'll give you a, I'll give you a minute in 10 minutes. 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, then I think another funny thing was just the gag of uh, when it pops back to um, to him after he has a conversation with Julianne Moore, and he's like, "You're right, I gotta go," and he just runs out the door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. isn't this where you work? Do you wanna, you wanna, you wanna finish up? <laughs> Oh, okay, so <laughs> I just googled this because I I really I, I this is this is this is some real stale trivia, real stale Ooh. trivia for uh, Columbo fans. But I was like, I wonder why one of his eyes is, looks a little different. It's than a glass the other. eye. He, he's got a glass eye. Yeah, I have no idea. Peter Falk. He's had a glass eye since Columbo. That's why I said it's stale tea. It's stale tea here, but tea. I'm excited. <laughs> Speaking of tea, we are like. Yeah. 10 minutes into this film that is it like we have not passed the 10 minute and Chris, it is I, a I, half I, hour I, into the show i feel like what you're saying is what do you see we cut the chit chat a-hole i really appreciate you're using uh this uh this uh this thing but i gotta tell you you keep using the same ones let's go let's go i'm bored let's go all right that didn't really work so, okay you're saying we should look two minutes into the future <laughs> <laughs> We're going through this movie two minutes at a time, and then we're all right. Let's go. All right, so we we got we 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 go to the diner scene, which is actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is where uh, Nick uh. Cage. Oh, so there's this whole thing. He has this like premonition about meeting Jessica Biel, and that's like the only time he can see more than two minutes of the future. So he's obsessed with like I got to go to the diner every day at this specific time because that's the time she walks in, and then finally on this day she walks in. <laughs> and it's Jessica Beale, and she's meeting up with her ex boyfriend, played by a guy whose name I forget, but Anders from Battlestar Galactica. If oh. that's a, a cultural reference that you care for, I was like, I know he looks familiar, but Chris figured it out. This um, movie, this this part of the movie too, was like, oh my so god, funny. and he was so he just staring at her like, oh my god, gawking. Like, and she's used to it. I mean, this is real life for actual Jessica Biel. Like, that is her life. You know what I mean? She goes places and people fucking gawk at her, I imagine, right? That's how life is for women, right? Well, and also she's famous and very attractive. Yeah. So it's like... I don't think... Yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, it's like, man, it's fucked up. Anyway, I don't know. I don't so, think a woman was anywhere near her dialogue in, in <laughs> writing it. I think... <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, a men's only weekend retreat like no women in the vicinity <laughs> at all at all when they wrote her responses and her and her dialogue for that it's scene. like guys guys this is where the romance is so how about he just looks at her you know because he she's his destiny so he stares at her <laughs> and he just doesn't look away ever <laughs> and you can tell she's uncomfortable but <laughs> keeps looking it's so, creepy. wait, did I freeze again? Are you kidding me? Uh-oh. Yeah, but you're cute. Yeah, oh, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good pose. <laughs> all right, all right. Again, if you you guys can still hear me, I'll keep chatting. Oh yeah, Maybe you sound great. Right. All right, so we uh we go to this scene where like he's basically wants to go pick up Jessica Biel, right? And um he tries all sorts of pickup lines. The advantage of his power to being go that back he in can time try and try every them pickup and- line. Which isn't creepy Just, at all. It's pretty hilarious. And I like, I like though, after she kept trying, after he kept trying, she just looks at him and she's like, don't try to stop. Yeah. I thought that was <laughs> good. That was the only one I bought. <laughs> like, he's about to get up and she's like, you are 20 years older than me. Leave me alone. <laughs> But, like, not just that. There's something that was so re- reviling about this, this combo. It, it like surpassed age. It was just this very strange, very strange man. I mean, we all like Nick Cage, but if you didn't know Nick Cage, if he was a stranger, he'd either be a very nice misfit guy or possibly a weirdo, you know? Yeah, you can't really tell by looking at him. Like, no. <laughs> he's a slow, he's definitely like a slow burn friend where you're yeah. like, I like this guy after a year. You're like, yeah, he's yeah. cool. He's the he's the one where your your friend you haven't talked to in a long time is dating someone new, and you see a, <laughs> you see a picture of them together and you're like, he must be really great, you, like he he doesn't he wow okay okay he I, must be 
fantastic, I guess. I think to <laughs> just to your point, there are some twenty year age difference characters or actors that would have worked in this situation. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't have been such a whoa. <laughs> I think it's almost like a regular thing in some in some movies, and you don't even notice it because they pick the right people. But here, no, not at all. There's yeah. no chemistry at all. <laughs> yeah. Did uh did you show the clip yet, Chris? The where he gets where he tries oh, to pick up lines. Oh yeah, let's try it out. Let's check out that mm, clip. Get ready. All right, here is a, cl- a famous clip. You're hurting me, Kendall. I think you're having another off day. Who the hell are you? I'm her future. Ugh. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Chris. So creepy. So he he dodges the punches in this version. You okay, Kendall? Mm-hmm. Wait for the magic trick. See, the thing it's gonna is, be a magic I trick. I don't know the reason why. See, now, now listen. Now I think it's only fair that you pay for the ladies' breakfast. Well, what are you having? He kept Keep those quarters. Yeah. In his uh, pocket all day. Yeah. I can pay for yeah. my own breakfast. That's all I could think about. You know what? <laughs> you two work things out. Just okay. feels like not having it. You're hurting me. Kendall, Try again. I think you're having another off He day. still uses this line, which is dumb. I'm her future. Oh. <laughs> <Really>? Take that, <laughs> not Dane Cook. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sock to the face. And this is after quite a few attempts, like... The, well, the only thing that eventually works is getting punched in the face by fucking Anders from Battlestar. Yeah, he went with yeah. the the Marty or the the George McFly approach. The poor me. You get injured bird watching at someone's house. Basically, what he's doing because he was being a creeper, and he threw himself in front of the car, which is that guy's fist. Yeah. And it's a time travel movie. This is Back to the Future all over again. Yeah, he's a creep from the beginning. Even later on, when he's like, "No, I'm not a, I'm not a sociopath. I'm not a creep." Like, well, I got the evidence here. Everything you did is pretty creepy, man. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> like, something really a, a creepy undertone to this whole scene that just kind of goes like right under the radar. He is lying to her the entire yeah. time. He sits down. And he's like, "I got to go to Flagstaff." There was never anything in Flagstaff. Yeah. Where was he, he, going? Just, he just wanted to go to Flagstaff because that's where she was going? He knew she was going in that direction. That's why he wanted to go to Flagstaff. Isn't that it's fucked just, up? We, he, I guess they wanted us to think it was okay because he just happens to be psychic and a, a stalker takes a little more effort. Yeah. <laughs> like a little bit more. <laughs> like a stalker would do a lot of pre-work. He just doesn't have to do that work. <laughs> so he's just a stalker with less effort. Great. He How even, romantic. <laughs> he like even lies to get pity from her. He says his car was stolen. He like, oh the my pity. car was like what? Oh, no, he stole like... a car. You stole a car. Yeah. You oh, are so the one who his stole car, the car was technically stolen. It was a stolen car. Ooh, not a lie. <laughs> this so this reminds me a little of um, I'm um, maybe jumping a gun a little bit, but uh, uh, Renny, did you see Watchmen, the TV show? No, I know it's great. Oh, okay, so there's I w- without I don't want to spoil too much for you, but there's a character in it who can see. I I, I mean, all right, so oh, fuck, I don't want to spoil it. No, all right, it's, anyway, a there's a Do- char- it's a guy named Doctor Manhattan from the comic book whose superpower is he can see all of time, all of time. Yeah. Like he sees his own life before it's happening. So he's he's yeah. this guy kind of. And we see that he's a, in a relationship with someone in the show, and like, how do you have a relationship with someone who can see? Yeah all of the future like it's like how do you have a real relationship with someone who's not on the same level with you in terms of space and time like that seems fucking hard they never (laughs) tackled the depressing like ennui that he must face every day (laughs) you know like i would have loved a scene where he goes into like watch tv and you see him just about to turn it on and then he just doesn't turn on nothing's on you know because he already knows because he checked every channel yeah that'd be weird he does have the look though (laughs) yeah like his default face is that. It's like oh. Meg had the greatest made, joke during. This. I know. I was like, I made a joke during this, which is that Nicholas Cage is Doctor Staten Island in this, but I don't know if that really resonates. As well. He's not Doctor. I thought it did. I thought that was funny. All right, let's skip ahead. All right, so they're they're going to. Oh, am I freaking frozen again? Uh, no what's going on with the game? frozies i'll have to come take a look at it i guess at some point i need it might be support. it might be the it might be the port you have your your 
camera plugged into. All right, I'm going to try plugging it into All right, so, so yeah, they come. Julian Moore follows them to this diner. They question the guy at the diner. And I don't know why I thought this was funny, but the guy at the diner had, like, like a little, like, are the cameras inside? He goes, no. How about outside? Uh, no. Like, oh, he was the best thing in the movie. That guy. That was great. He had his regulars. Yeah. Oh, we got the lady who always uh, counts her. She weighs her dressing. <laughs> like, I wonder, do you think they just were like, hey, improvise a couple of regulars for us? And they Possibly, because it was pretty well written. Yeah. Maybe it was improvised. It wasn't part of the, uh, no. <laughs> the, the writers. Uh, I think maybe, what, do you think, and you might know more about this because you're an actor, but um, <laughs> do you think... <laughs> do you think that uh improv in film like i know that's a very common thing now it's like oh improvise these lines do you think in 2007 that was as common a thing perhaps with comedy only hmm. I, wonder. I, I don't know i wonder if they even do that in more dramatic or action films <laughs> who knows if it's a big star they probably let him <laughs> I know that I know that we've had a lot of instances where Nicolas Cage's lines were improvised in, in movies. I know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of documented stuff of that. The only um, one I think he improvised in this film was like when they went to the Native American reservation and he's like, oh, no, I want to meet the shaman. <laughs> that was such a plot hole. I'm like, um, is Jessica Biel native? Is is Nicolas Cage native because he looks like he's in brown face. I, I thought, I thought that's might, that might've been where it was going. They went yeah. overboard like, with the bronzer and you just, you don't know what's going on. Anymore. I don't know. I don't know. And so this is a real place, by the way, the, where they go is Havasu falls in, mm. uh, which is near the grand Canyon. I believe yeah, it's pretty. Have you been there? No, just, I've wow. never been there, but it looks gorgeous. And, What's interesting is that to get there today, and I don't know if this was the case, you know, 14 years ago, you have to hike for 10 miles. Like you have to get a permit and it's very restricted and you hike for 10 miles to get to this waterfall. So they just sort of fucking like drove there with a camera crew. I don't, I don't know. Maybe things have changed. But, but Jessica Beale had to hike 10 miles to teach her students every day. I bet it's changed. I bet it's like, it got okay. more popular and they were like, nah, let's, it let's make make people work for this but after that, that, next people were flocking <laughs> <laughs> they were like oh that, there's a waterfall near vegas oh i'm in like let's go find it <laughs> but like she Dude, didn't even go there to teach that day she went there to drop off a birthday present that was it that was oh if, man if anything the, the white, children were teaching her how to speak some other language that was <laughs> that was such a white savior thing like yeah oh, she said one of our words <laughs> a, a bronzed person say yeah. person. <laughs> oh my God. Impressive. Like the only person, the only reason that's in there is just to be like, oh, Jessica Biel is a good person. Just yeah. in case you didn't know that. Yeah, that was her. Want to rub your nose in. Oh man! And before right. this, if we didn't get into this before this, they introduced yeah. the bad guys. Oh, who are the, the most worst, bizarre, worst written bad guys I've ever seen in a movie? I would say top, top number one. Unclear. I've never been. <laughs> Like Less they are more confused. They are completely non-uniform in terms of seeming goal, motivation, uh, what nation they're from, what the language they speak. Is... <laughs> like, <laughs> what? This is like the UN of bad guys, but like with no one tying it together, no no boss. I don't even know what. Not this at was. all. I think they just said, "Well, we need terrorists, but we don't want to be racist." Okay, we're gonna make them white. Who's white? But there was a uh, whole crew of Asian guys who were actually doing all the work on the nuke. I don't know who yeah. these guys, who were those guys? Yeah, I just, okay, not Middle Eastern. So we'll get yeah. everybody else and speak in different languages to each other. Great. There was one British guy who you're like, oh, this is the big boss man. He disappears. You never see him again in the whole movie. He's just in that one scene where they just like, I watch him dead. And that was it. You never see him again. Nope. The biggest question in the whole movie is why do these ragtag uh, group of white terrorists and some some Asian middlemen want to blow up Los Angeles? The they don't even attempt you. to make it. Like, I, I have uh, never in a movie seen like bad guys this 
thinly sketched. Yeah. <laughs> like no. if you think about like bad guys in a movie, you almost always recognize somebody like this, this, uh, you know, at least in Nicolas Cage movies, I can't think of a movie where the bad guys are not like someone I've seen before, mm. you know, or like, ah, just, this is yeah, it's so random. It They're was- speaking French, by the way. It yeah, was, at one point, I was like, oh. <laughs> there was too much of a cliffhanger, I think, too, when it comes to, not even a cliffhanger, but, like, you could tell they were, like, they were trying to insinuate there was this big, uh, you know, overarching evil scheme happening, but we're not, like, almost, like, you don't get to know that this movie, that's part of the most amazing trilogy of all time. Like, yeah, it's a different the next movie. Trilogy. <laughs> next, Thanks for next. saying cliffhanger, Chris, because that's a great transition to... The next section, which I think we should talk about, which is uh, Jessica Beals and Nicolas Cage's Stevie hookup in the Cliffhanger Motel. The romantic getaway that they had at the Cliffhanger Motel. Which I think is supposed to be on the side of the Grand Canyon. It's a little unclear. I've Um, never been more thankful not to see a sex scene. I was so glad. (laughs) Can you hit us with that clip of uh, how he seduces her, Chris? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh. This is, I apologize in advance because this might include them kissing and I gotta try this that. move. That's you. You're beautiful. <laughs> so he has a paper rose, he lights it on fire, it turns into a real rose. Wow. Wow, wow guys. Wow. <laughs> she was stifling the laughter in that one for sure. <laughs> wow. Wow. He wants to be kissed there. Like do it. Was incredible. <laughs> what was it? Yes. Smooch. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> do we got a well, sound for that? <laughs> what do we have a sound? I'd be damned if I didn't get really turned on. <laughs> So the thing about this movie is it's terribly miscast and what they kept trying to do, I think was to lower Nick Cage's status to try and make him more likable and make it, make him like the, they really, they were trying to play the pity angle to the audience with him. Like he, remember he told that story about fish falling from the sky. Yeah. Did your panties not drop when he, uh, I had a motor <laughs> with a capital O. <laughs> oh, um, the, I I feel like this is a great thing. It was something we haven't talked about this show, but uh, a little little personal detail about Chris's life. You guys know that Chris is a trained magician. Um. Oh, that's <laughs> why we like this movie so much. I wouldn't say a trained magician. I have taken some magic classes at the Magic Castle. Hopefully, not R.I.P. <laughs> Uh, so Meg, did he pull any of those moves on you? Chris is not a very I would say Chris is not a very enthusiastic magician. Uh, I'm he enthusiastic takes the classes. about going to the magic castle. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth it. That was why I did the classes. It was not to learn magic, but it was also very fun. But also, yeah, it didn't turn me on. So how does this relate to uh, like the, this 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 portrayal of a magician? How does that relate to the magicians that you met at the Magic Castle? I think there's this is gonna get deep. I think with an actual magician, there is uh, always a layer of crippling insecurity because there's an obsession with appearances versus uh, versus you know hiding what you really are because that's all magic is. It's it's uh, mm-hmm. it's like comedy is like this thing people do they develop almost as a what's the word uh deflection it's a it's a deflection method so like i think for a lot of magicians it could be that way too so uh when you talk to a magician they always kind of have like this facade up you don't really get like a good conversation Mm -hmm. going with the magician so i think like it would have been great if they had like such a a, like a really deep character like that like in this movie Mm -hmm. like or somebody who like had a lot of problems because they had this terrible secret and they had developed this magician persona to try and like, you know, get through life. And they were just trying to fly under the radar and hope nobody noticed them. So they didn't go back to a lab where they were like, you know, dissected their whole childhood. Like that would have been a cool movie to say. Uh, but yeah, no, he's just way too confident and like way too like pulls out the road. Like what the <laughs> fuck was that? So sparmy. Yeah. Look at you writing a better movie. There you go. Yeah. Right? It and wouldn't I, be that hard to write a Randy better will version be in of this it. movie. Meg will play Julianne Moore. 
I will yeah. play. I will play Columbo. A wig. <laughs> a wig and a glass eye. Oh man! <laughs> All we need. And that's how Chris lost his eye. His. <laughs> I'm Columbo now. Because he tried the rose trick. I'm oh. Like, ah! <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> man. So. All right. So. Yes. Uh, sorry, Let's I went on go... the, the t- tangent. No, I, 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 I prompted it on purpose because I care. Okay. Let's go to this next clip because this is what happens. There's like a bunch of stuff that happens. There's a little chase scene. Julianne Moore shows up at the FBI. They're trying to capture him. He uses <laughs> his powers to create a chain reaction Rube Goldberg out of nature. Yep. And a With... water tower and a car and a truck. The the final destination. He tries Note the, final the green screen here, by the way. No, you're not yeah. The cage is absolutely in front of the green screen for no good reason. So oh, that is a wig. <laughs> oh, that's totally a wig. Julianne Moore's? Yeah. You're gonna let me die. That's a wig, too. The cage doesn't have any scalp. It's just black. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so basically, he could have gotten away, but he realized that she was going to die if he didn't do something. Yep. So he, he decided to stay and save her. He's a good guy. That's when he realized the cops are good. <laughs> yep. That's when he's... <laughs> Original writing. Die, pig, runs away. Yeah. <laughs> the rewrite <laughs> saves her. <laughs> So that's how he gets captured. They put him in a little Clockwork Orange style, like uh, eyeball oh hold open thingy. Oh boy, was that uh, incongruous. <laughs> hey, just yeah. to jump back, sorry to backtrack, but do you remember when he seduces her by saying, uh, what did the, what is it? Why did the Zen master eat a hot dog or something like that? Yes, I have oh, the quote. Well. I have the quote. Okay, he says, uh, what a, the Zen- a, Buddhist, a Buddhist monk orders a hot dog and he says, I'll have one with everything. But the actual joke is supposed to be, make me one with everything. Yeah. Uh, this I was is... confused. <laughs> yeah. The joke is messed up, apparently. Yeah. And nobody nobody knew. <laughs> like, nobody cared. They're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we got... We got... Um, we got this hotel there the, then julian moore takes him away and like we're supposed to like be sympath we're supposed to think like the cops are doing the right thing here right like like we're supposed to think like oh yeah so just pry his eyes open and force him to do this thing yeah like it seems like they they read the movie is sort of saying like look at nick cage's character he's being such an asshole he won't help out <laughs> you know but like what's weird about this movie is we looked at the time and this is like the movie's almost over it's it's like it was an, a real solid hour of like nothing. I guess yeah. you know it was fun, but like they did, took this long to get to the point where they actually start. Like he just keeps running from them so many times. Like they don't start yeah. solving the problem of the bomb until like twenty minutes left of the film. You know what? He he really became a Sims character. <laughs> like you just you just see your character like go around the cabin. And then he drinks some juice, and then he goes this way. Uh, How do the Sims juice. talk again? It's been so long ago. Like, Mrah. like Nicolas Cage. That's how yeah. they talk. They go, Mrah, Mrah. They tell Mrah. random jokes and quotes and things like that and do magic yeah. to each other. Yeah, they have a hot dog, one with everything. Oh, they, man. so, so they, yeah, so they've got him. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of bullshit he sees, here. Right, he, he sees Liz, uh, Jessica Biel, blow up on a parking garage. So right. he karate chops a couple of guys with his future powers, gets out of there, runs through downtown <laughs> L.A. to this uh, parking garage, and then he's like, all right, I'm here now. I'll stop running. I just want to see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and he starts going to superpower future man mode where he can like just see everything. Because apparently the, the he can see further if it has anything to do with Jessica Biel. My theory, they're related. Ooh, twins. The, the big twist ending is they're related. 
I would love that. That would be, and he's like, yee, 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 fade to black. Now, the, sh- the shaman is their father. Oh, they're <laughs> that, both Native American. Not- yeah. They're- uh, so yeah, they, 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 he gets to the roof of this building. There's a sniper waiting for him and they pull the old <laughs> switcheroo. Cause the, the bad guys know at this point that all they have to do is plan something in the future to lure him in, which is crazy. That's a lot of uh, knowledge, yeah. They know him so well. Everybody knows Nick. <laughs> but they're not afraid of him. They're like, he can see the future. Yeah. Psh, we'll just plan something in the future to lure him in. Instead of being like, shit, he can see our every move. We're fucked. <laughs> which is know. what ends up happening pretty much. Well, sort yeah. of. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah, so they all end up at this like dock in Long Beach or some <laughs> shit. As far away from the from the city. Yeah. But still with that shot of the city in the back. <laughs> Bad guys Which, in Long Beach, another parallel to Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, Gone in 60 Seconds, mo- a big part of it takes place at like a warehouse on oh, Long- yeah. in Long Beach on the dock. I mean, they got places fast. They went from Vegas to Havasu to Long Beach. Yep. <laughs> All of which were Big Bear. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. They went from Vegas to Big Bear to downtown LA to Long Beach. I guess that makes more sense. Yeah, a lot of this movie was filmed in Big Bear and like in the mountains around there. Like the whole, uh, the Cliffhanger Hotel is a, is a restaurant near Crestline, California, which is near Big Bear. Huge, huge cabin, fully stocked. Yep. Oh man, the road's closed. We have to stay at some shithole. Good thing that, that place has, looks amazing. I would stay there. That has, like bl- fresh blood oranges. And <laughs> <laughs> what, what is going on? But also, like the outside of that building, there couldn't have been more than two rooms the size of that friggin' room. So, like, yeah. what the hell? Cabin. Yeah. I'm sure there's a pretty high demand considering, like, everyone who comes to that stop has to turn around and he's sending yep. them all to the same place. Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. All right. Then we're, we're French, at the warehouse. French bomb lady comes out and starts oh. <laughs> lining up the bombs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> French bomb lady. Yeah. And, and then you can see it because he sees the future. He knows that if that person walks, if the guy he's with, like, again, there is so much walking around this warehouse in lines of people. Like the oh. good guys are walking around in line. The bad guys have just the beal and they're walking around in line. It's just like walk, right. walk, walk. Nick Cage. Walk, 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 walk doesn't have any guns he walks just confidently in the crowd because he knows he's never gonna die and he's just like <gasps> his power walking through the the bullets yeah he's playing golden eye with, <laughs> with no gun <laughs> just going through there was something about this that was like another opportunity they missed like was he's experiencing all these deaths and it, like that could really weigh on a person Ooh. And it, you know <laughs> People that's more interesting yeah. like because you could see like like he goes, oh, because he got blown up, and that's why he knows it's gonna blow with somebody. Like mm-hmm. he's walking all of a sudden. Remember, he just goes, oh. <laughs> he's like, yeah. "Don't go that way." I just blew up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. Like if you're seeing yourself die constantly, you're seeing all your friends die constantly. Like that's gonna fuck you up. They he's... never play with that. He should be like a total deranged alcoholic, a la leaving Las Vegas. It should be. That must be why he smokes sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there was one part where jessica feels like um you know life should be surprising and then like, he goes yeah it'd be nice if it was do you remember that i don't in the car and she's like yeah mm-hmm. you should just be surprised sometimes by life he goes yeah that would be nice it's like oh my oh, yeah. god that's terrible what a thought like what a terrible right. life this man has but they never even go into that at all they, <laughs> they oh, keep it horrible. light <laughs> uh, okay. okay i want to show one more or we have two clips. Yes, let's, to let's end watch them. to fit this up. This is Chris's favorite part of the movie. Yeah, I love this part of the movie. <laughs> so he's trying to find Jessica Beale, I think, or something. I don't know. He's he's like, you guys take this deck, I'll take the rest, and he does this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's splitting himself into multiple cages. <laughs> yes. So good. Just cage after cage after cage. <laughs> Oh my god. What's hilarious is he is sending multiple cages to the same place. 
<laughs> like, look, like, there's two there. Like, why do you need to send five to the same balcony? Anyway, there's two guys right there. <laughs> I love that, though. Ooh, good reference. I got that reference. Fantasia. Yes. Oh, that is, Renny, that is, wow, that is a really good reference. Well, I was just going to say Sims again, so I'm glad I thought of something else. <laughs> you dug a little deeper and you got Fantasia. Oh. I need I need to have like a congratulatory uh, uh, soundboard. I was like, what what could I say that would say like, that was a good reference, but I don't bees, really have. Bees, the bees. <laughs> you could say, <laughs> bravo. Bees for hours. See, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's not going to be very useful. When he says bravo and face off, bravo, bravo, (laughs) remember? Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Chris, I'm going to need you to reference uh, bunnies and peaches uh, and the Declaration of Independence so I can use the soundboard clips. Man. (laughs) That's your... Almost July. I know what happened. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even almost July at all. (laughs) Uh, I wish it was. All right. So I also, uh, yeah, sorry. Continue. No, I was just going to wrap it up with the last clip, but you have a thought before we get there. Well, we have those posters. We can talk about that before we wrap it up. Let's talk about posters after. Um, Okay. So then we get to the final scene of the movie, which is the most, did you, did you see, I I mean, Chris obviously did, but Ren, did you see this twist coming and how did it make you feel? I didn't. And I appreciated it because (laughs) I was so disturbed by the idea of having a sex scene and what happened, like what he saw during the sex or after the sex is as horrible as, <laughs> as the sex scene would be if we saw it. Like, so I, like, I don't want to, I don't want to like just spoil it, but we're, I guess we're already spoiling the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and show the clip, Chris. Cause I think we might so as well like, just talk about it. What you're saying is you wish it had reversed to just before the sex. So I just <laughs> well, we erased never... it. <laughs> well, we never saw it. So it's like, what's something horrible? Watching Los Angeles blow up or this terrible sex scene? <laughs> These are both horrible things. And I think it was very funny to me that they occurred at the same time. Like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> well, here's the ending of the movie, guys. <laughs> we saw <wrong>. that. <laughs> mistake what i made a mistake and we'll never know what that was now (laughs) (laughs) bomb blows up (laughs) kelly blows up and he's back at the cliffhanger the yes. funniest thing, all right, so the end of this movie literally is the hotels in the background and the sign for the hotel says cliffhanger and the movie's a fucking cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, God, that was dumb. Yep. That was a big old pile of crap. Oh, I loved it. It was lovable crap, but oh, my God. So the whole movie didn't happen. For, I mean, for, you know, like up to the the second half of the movie did not happen. It was just a fast forward Nick Cage was having in his mind. And now he's going to do it right. No, he's but not. What a mistake. <laughs> he's not going to do it right. He can't. He actually can't because he threw away his one tool to do so, which was Jessica Biel. He said, I don't <laughs> want you involved. The only way he can actually see into the future that far is when Jessica uh, Biel is involved. Oh, so Ooh. he needs to have more sex with her that we don't see, hopefully. The only way and... to save the world is to throw her into danger constantly. <laughs> That's it. That's a great point, Chris. You have to keep her in harm's way or else the you future. Know, every relationship has their own thing, you know, however it works. I'm not here to judge. It would have been great. We? It would have yeah. been great if at the end of this movie. He's like, I'm sorry. And he walks over to that sniper that they just, that just disappeared. The one that was pointing at the building, you know, he just walked out and the sniper was gone. But he walks out to the sniper with Jessica Biel and says, here, take her. She'll be a good <laughs> hostage. And just like sends her on her way with them. And then she finds out where the nuke is. 
She's like a bomb sniffing dog. Yeah. They just <laughs> move her around with a leash. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God, this movie. All right. Guys, we did it. We made it through the plot of this movie. <laughs> let's let's check in with our bingo card, Chris. All right, let's look at the bingo card. See how we're doing. I oh. know we got a couple. Now, Renny, you haven't seen this before. We've had a, quite a few movies on here. Uh, <laughs> and we have yet to get a bingo. This is oh. several movies. But I do think we can throw a few things on here. For one, he smoked in this movie. So... <laughs> Boom, smoking. Uh, we also have a car chase. We sure do. Yes. Um, That might be it, though. I think that's it. I mean, there wasn't really a heist, right? What are the other ones? He... Oh, okay. Do we have fancy undercover cage? No. No. Well, he put a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. put a straw hat on. That's undercover. It's a, it's a very specific thing we're looking for. It's like this like fancy, pretentious voice he puts on, uh, which has come up in several movies. We, we went real specific with this, and it's sure biting us in the ass. Wait, not, um, non-native English-speaking love interest. She does speak some other language during the film. Yeah, but she's one Jessica. Line. <laughs> Jessica Beal, come on. All right. Guys, we don't have a bingo. We got two new ones. I'll take it. Let's... let's uh, Bop on over to the trivia. I do have a couple pieces of trivia for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Sound cue. All right. Did you guys know that this in May 2006, there was a mini series on stars, the channel <laughs> that's, that's how called I <laughs> looking for stars, which had, it was a competition to get, the, the competition show to get a speaking role in the movie next there were 200 contestants and one guy named marcus welch won a speaking role he is not on the imdb i could not figure out who he was what? in this movie but he won this reality show i guarantee he won the you cutting room floor role <laughs> no i guarantee you you know who he was right who was he, he? must have been the diner owner no, he uh, is definitely an African-American man. Let me pull uh, him up I, again. I could not remember there being one person of color in this movie except for uh, Other than Julianne Moore's... Um, uh, oh, maybe he that, was. We knew he would die. We knew he would die. <laughs> oh, his part, her partner. It could have been her partner, yeah. It does, it's a younger guy. Oh, it could, uh, oh, that's a pretty major role to get from a Oh, no, show. I think that's somebody named Tori Kittles. Oh. That's yeah. a good name. God, I think uh, now, I, now I'm a terrible person. I'm like, I can't remember a single person of color. One of the main characters is son of a bitch. Yeah, I do think that's it. Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, some good that did for him. He didn't even make it on the IMDb page. So, wow. How generous. I know. Ours. Good job. <laughs> All right. So it was Here's like their American one. Idol. Jeez. <laughs> they, uh, the diner that they showed in this was also the diner used in the movie Triple X. Yeah. Okay. Pam, Pat's, Pam's. What's the one? It's Pans? A, yeah, by the airport. Yes, P-A-N-N-S, Pans. That place looks like yeah. it. Look fun. Great. I go there. Um, uh, it was Nicholas Q- Nicholas Cage's idea that his character be a Las Vegas magician, and it was also his idea that Jessica Biel's character took a, had a job that took her to a Native American reservation at the Grand Canyon. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Why? Who knows? And uh, one of the villains, the, I think the main guy played by an actor named Enzo Salente, uh, is dubbed by a British actor. <laughs> so the guy with the British accent just straight up dubbed. <laughs> I'm that, surprised I didn't. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice either. <laughs> that was a pretty seamless. Uh, it was the ADR? Is that what it's called? We have a Goodness voice actor dubbed. on the show tonight, so I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> And that's what I got. Let's uh, rank this movie. All right, it's time. <laughs> I. I'm confident that this will not be the worst movie for no, sure. It cannot be. It's going to be pretty high. We'll see. But is it going to beat Moonstruck, our current number one? Seems doubtful. Highly doubtful. 
All right, ready. So the way this works is this is going to be out of 10, uh, 10 being the highest, and uh, we will talk you through each category. So the first category is the cast of the movie. So like how excited were you to see the different people in it? How well cast do you think it was? You know, just general thoughts on that. And if you want, if you want, we can, we can go first and you can hop in either way is fine. Uh, <coughs> It's hard to say because I like the individual people, <laughs> but like, I think Julianne Moore did her did the best she could do. She uh, sure I did. I don't know if the direction was an issue, but some of the acting sucked, and I think those actors are better than what they showed us. <laughs> um, I kind of want to say five because they. That feels I, middle of the road to me. I feel like that's like, reasonable, yeah. Yeah, because Julianne Moore was as good as she could be with the crappy dialogue and Nicolas Cage, I mean, he played the basset hound in the rain. Like, that's, I think that's what we were supposed to see. <laughs> <laughs> I think he could have been better. So I'm really middle of the road here. I think Jessica Biel was terrible, but her lines were awful. So I... <laughs> It's, it's a little hard to gauge there. And we'll have a set. And there's the next one is, is more acting specific. Oh, um, okay. too, so we'll dig into that as well. Um, all right, Chris, what you got? Uh, yeah, you got Beale. You got Julianne Moore. Uh, you got Columbo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got, uh, I recognize the dude who was the, uh, the head of security at the casino. He was, uh, Oh, he was insane. Oh my god. Can we can I just uh, interrupt and say of course I had, a huge, I had a huge laugh when they brought the casino people in. The FBI called the casino people in and they said, "Get me casino security." Like <laughs> like that's the name of this nondescript casino. <laughs> we need casino security. <laughs> Well, also, everybody learned the name of it, yeah. He, also, like one of the guys pulls, or it was Julian Moore pulls her badge and says FBI, and he's like, "It's like let's not make this a pissing contest." Like, like the casino's got some kind of jurisdiction. The casino guys, <laughs> casino, <laughs> casino uh, security. Oh god. Well, I think I'm gonna give a single point to each of the people I recognize in this movie and give it a four. Oh, I was gonna say four as well yeah. for the acting. Oh, this is just for oh, so still we're still on, on cast. We're, you're still on cast. Oh, okay. we're, 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 we're we're lagging behind. Sorry. All right, <laughs> I'm also gonna give it a four. I was excited to see Michael Truco, aka Anders from Battlestar, Julianne Moore, Peter Falk, and everything. I don't know. It was fine. It was fine. All right. How good was the acting? And this is. This is a weird one, Renny, because it's not Nick Cage. This is everyone else's acting. Everyone else. I, we set this up this way for some fucking reason, and we have okay. made our bed. I don't think okay. it makes sense. But yeah, everyone else is acting. I'm going to say four, because it's it's a little worse than middle of the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It's bugging me, so I just want to find out who this actor was. <laughs> uh, who plays the head of C uh, Casino Security? Oh, Casino Security. <laughs> uh, Jose, Jose Zuniga. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, where do I he was a one of the main characters in one of the recent seasons, of The Expanse, which I just watched. That's why I <laughs> recognize him. All right, so a four for acting for me. Uh, I'm gonna go even lower and give it a three because uh, yeah, I was I was also gonna say three. I swear I'm not just copying yours, Chris. No, that th this acting was hardcore bad. <laughs> All right, bad out of lines. ten, how out of ten, how fun was this movie? Ooh, oh god, eight point five. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it had. I had fun. I agree. Like I had fun. I had a lot of good uh, car chases, good sequences with the his powers. I thought were cool. So I'm also I'm also gonna I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it a seven. I think there were some points that dragged a little bit. There's a lot of again walking around in lines. Um, <laughs> hey, I have a sound clip. 
You're not having any fun, are you, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't couldn't figure out a way to work it in. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna get we're gonna get smooth around these. All right. Technical, this is mm. uh sets, uh special effects, <laughs> costumes, music, <laughs> wigs, all of that. Um I'll give it a six because the direction was good. It moved really cool. Um, the music was pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, I mean, the CG was funny, but I've seen worse. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you said six, right? Yeah. Sorry, I like my brain farted there. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with Renny on this for all the same reasons. <laughs> the same. I'm gonna give it a five, a little bit less. Five. I don't know. I think some of the a lot of the some of the green screen stuff was really obvious to me and, and for no yes. good reason. Um and the wig just the not, wigs. Not a good wig. <laughs> Julianne Moore's wig was good. All right. Overall out of 10, how much did you enjoy this movie? <laughs> the look on your face right now is great. It's tough. It's a real tough one. And it doesn't need to be the average of your scores above. It's just whatever your gut says. I'm going to say seven. <laughs> okay. That's really funny. That's the number I had in my head too. Seven. Yeah. Cause it's not, I, I enjoyed it. Doesn't mean it was good. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I, I, this is my second time through five years from now. I wouldn't mind watching this again. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to say six. I didn't hate it. I certainly wasn't unpleasant to watch. I think there was some of the <laughs> plot holes and like, oh man, inconsistent, just the lack of character development on many of the characters was confusing to me, but you know, I didn't hate it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't unpleasant. All right. This last section, we can popcorn whoever wants to say something. This is just a plus or minus one point for something in particular that you liked or disliked about this movie. Like you can subtract a point if the, uh, mm. you know, 20 year age difference really fucking killed it for you. <laughs> or no, that, it was just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the sex was so good it blew up Los Angeles. I'm, I'm trying to be like, like <laughs> maybe that's what happened <laughs> here i will i will add a point i uh did i i know this um would probably be controversial but i took i appreciate that they made a big swing with the ending and mm -hmm. they did something unusual they did yeah they, I, totally. I thought, it didn't totally work but they fucking went there and i thought that was cool mm -hmm. good good effort a for effort um i i want to subtract 0.5 for <laughs> having a terrible head of the FBI. He was the embodiment of a self tape. Like his suit didn't make sense for an FBI director. <laughs> he didn't sound that urgent that the um, entire county of Los Angeles was gonna blow up. It was very, it was very exposition-y and first audition like no, no, and then so julian moore just was just like i wish you were a better actor <laughs> like none of those people sold the situation enough to like no, they get did past not it. sell it <laughs> so i think this guy who, who you're talking about is the i think they credit him as the nsa director and he was a guy named jim beaver who has actually had a ton, <laughs> ton of roles jim he was in, okay. he was uh in the okay, boys jim. okay he was in Supernatural. Um, that's like a lot of, you know, like NCIS, that kind of stuff. But he's a wow. he, big part. Oh, he's a huge role in Justified, too. So this guy's, this guy's been around. Well, so it doesn't explain Deadwood. Huge 35 episodes of Deadwood. Really? Well, this, this guy's been in a lot. Post, this is all pre this movie. I mean, post this movie. So maybe. He yeah. Was, so he had things got better. Yeah. Oh, this movie was just like, okay, today I just got this audition. Uh, I'm reading for the FBI director. Um, <clears throat> we have a nuclear bomb in Los Angeles. Uh, better get it. <laughs> it's like, sir, we're out of ideas. I only have one left. We got to call a fortune teller. <laughs> what? Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> well, I got no ideas. 
do it. Yeah. That's this movie. Like, that is this fucking movie. You know, I thought of something when you were talking. Like, do you think the end of this movie is he dies and he goes to his happiest memory and that's it? <gasps> yeah, that's it. I like that. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that, Chris. <laughs> that's a weird one. I'm going to give it plus one uh, for something that Rennie said earlier, which was the the unintentional moments of comedy in this film <laughs> <laughs> like when they they have they took uh jessica beale aside they they get her while she's getting coffee oh my god that scene in the, in the car she's in the car and they you have this reaction shot where jessica beale does the worst <laughs> acting i've ever seen in my whole life where she's like oh my god he's a murderer like it's like <laughs> so terrible that moment was like so good <laughs> But did it did it make you laugh as much as both of them smiling at each other like we're the same? Yeah. Because I teach Native Americans and you're part of I'm the FBI. Oh yeah, okay. we're the only two named female actors in this whole movie. <laughs> That's it. That was just those two. Then there was French bomb lady who I don't know if it had a name <laughs> besides French bomb lady. That's it. <laughs> Oh God! All right, we got the scores. <laughs> Let let's. Uh, oh, oh, wait, hold on. Before we go, oh, the, I'm looking at the IMDb. The the terrorists are all credited as Mr. Jones, Miss Brown, Mr. Green, Mr. White. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. So, so like Weird they just made up fake reservoir, names. Reservoir Dogs, that shit. All right. They were like, so, oh shit, we forgot to name these people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> let's make it cool. Reservoir Dogs, it. Let's 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 see where this lands. I'm guessing this is solid middle of the road, maybe Ooh. above the halfway point. Take us away, Chris. 14. Uh, 14. Okay, maybe not. Right next to leaving Las Vegas and right above 8 millimeter. <laughs> wow, okay, this is not a good not a good uh score. I thought it would do better than this, but uh... I'm looking at the no- I'm looking at the names and I agree with this score. I agree with it. I think it's better than eight millimeter, but not as good as Vampire's Kiss. Not as good as. <laughs> Is it better than National Treasure? I don't know. I, I I think National Treasure may be an underrated movie on our list. Our guest, I think. No, Will didn't... Will didn't really bomb it though. I don't know. It's it's definitely a sleeper on our. We list. were just grumpy about National Treasure for yeah. sure. <laughs> we spent like too long talking about it. And we're just like fuck this fucking movie. All right, so. We uh, have ranked this movie. Let's. It's, it's number time. fourteen. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it's it. Time that's for the I cage got. gauge. It's a two-axis plot quickly. that shows uh, Cage's acting ability versus his quintessential Cage brand craziness. Uh, oh. When I say Cage craziness, I mean that that particular Cage crazy. Not he plays a crazy or mentally ill character. It's someone you know that that cr- Cage yelling random lines, being crazy Cageness. So Zeus's butthole. Exactly. That is an example. So out of 10, what would you give Cage in terms of craziness in this film? He had so many opportunities for crazy mm. that he didn't, he didn't take. I'm going to I'm going to have to say 2. Like it was so restrained and phoned in. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm going to go 0 on this one. Maybe I'm going to give it a 1 just because Hey, I actually I don't know. I'm gonna give it a one for that one magic trick because it was like, alright, it's a little weird. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a a two for some of the weird stunts he did in terms of like oh, when he splitting jumped. up and like, oh, I'm gonna get punched in the face. Remember and when he just straight up jumps off that cliff? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> just for no reason. Whee! That was pretty good. <laughs> all oh. right, acting. Uh, I'm gonna guess we're all fairly low on this one. K- only Cage is acting. Only his. Yeah. Is acting out of ten. Four. Four. Ooh, very generous. Uh, <laughs> I I think he was not acting at all when he was staring at Jessica Biel during his film. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it a three. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a two. This was a rough one, guys. I think you're I think you're being very nice, Sam, for this. This is uh, just like so, so we are in no man's land. I am her future. This film is is right in the worst quadrant of the cage gauge, which is the less crazy bad acting quadrant. You don't want to be in that one because that's just a shit movie. Uh, you compare it to some of the other ones that are in that quadrant. You got 
the worst movie on our list, USS Indianapolis, Men of Courage. Uh, is it right on top of Gone? No, the one it's right on top of, of is National Treasure. Uh, the one God, I love this formula glasses. you have uh, so quickly calculated. Eight millimeter is, is in that corner too. You got uh, <laughs> you got the, the family man. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's a real shit. It's a real shit quadrant. You don't want to be in that quadrant. <laughs> but yeah. What's weird is Moonstruck is in that quadrant. No, it's not Moonstruck. Weird. What movie is this? I have to, uh, I have to I start labeling these. Yeah, we're, it's a lot to ask us to remember all these. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> so much. see Moonstruck on here. Moonstruck is that one. Yeah, Moonstruck's in the oh, yes, crazy yes, yeah. bad acting quadrant. I'm going to have to re 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 Canoiter my my little graphic here. Yeah, I like your your graph is great for the beginning, and now that we're up to <laughs> fucking like twenty movies, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy time. Just remembering <laughs> what movie it was by Nick Cage's face and his his face alone. That's all we do. <laughs> That's our goal, <sighs> guys. We have reached the end of the episode <laughs> so far. We did it. We've made a whole journey. Um, so, Renny, tell us about what's going on with you, your podcast, anything else you want to tell the audience about. I wish I had more going on, but uh, yeah, my podcast season two is wrapping up in the next few weeks. They're all a lot of fun. Um, I cut out so much of the uh, <laughs> boring exposition FBI scenes <laughs> from my podcast, unlike this movie. So, uh, <laughs> well, so so tell us a little bit about the like so it, what the premise behind it, just for for those that are unfamiliar. Well, the incredibly loose hook, if you want to call it that at all, is that I want it to sound like private phone calls. Nice. So, so instead of saying, you know, how's your sister doing? Well, my sister who does this and does this for all of the people listening, like I, I want that cut out. <laughs> um, so but I, I have to say, like almost every call, I have to stop at some point during the conversation and, and remind people like you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to explain what that is i i know your cousin <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I know them <laughs> I, I have a lot of my conversations end with me reminding them like i know your cousin <laughs> it's like in case they forgot every conversation <laughs> so that podcast is called ring 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 with renny rivas it's on all the places that oh. have uh have a streaming on Excellent. all the podcast place i wrote plus and i a. i forgot to ask renny what happened what, what's with the band-aid on your neck oh yeah so i had a weird mole and um the doctor just sliced it off straight away and i love a woman who sees what she wants and she <laughs> takes it like, she saw it and she she took it all completely off and that's a that's a girl boss so, and I, I understand you'll I love be a girl boss. you'll be auctioning off that mole mm. at the next uh, on your next podcast. <laughs> I think the lab is having fun with it right now. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Thank, thank you for the update. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Mysterious Get your moles check. You might have a an I have a mole. Cut it off for you. <laughs> Oh, Chris is having a coffin fit. Woo. I feel like uh, mysterious band aids are always a great icebreaker. That is true. I can't believe you guys saw it. It's it's white person color. <laughs> how did you? <laughs> how did you see this concealed bandage? I don't. Well, um, good luck with the mole, and good <laughs> luck with the girl boss doctor. <laughs> and thank you well, so much. Well, you know, next time I'll I'll do one of a. Uh, I'll tell her I, uh, she's my future. Maybe that'll seal the deal. Yes. <laughs> I'm her future. <laughs> I am her future. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Line. So we have reached the end of our episode. We uh, have some other things for you to check out. We uh, Are we doing a virtual improv this week, Chris? No, this we week we're on break for virtual improv. Coming back the week after on Friday nights oh, right. at 7 p.m. Pacific on the same Woo! channel. Same channel, virtual improv this week off next week on um we are back next sunday 
uh, for a city of angels. We are watching that with two of my friends from Palo. Oh my God. I am so watching that with you. I Dude, hope you do. There's more logs. There's more CG logs. There's more there's logs. More CG, there's CG logs in that movie? She gets oh, killed by a, logs. There's an important one. <laughs> Very important one. Did I just spoil oh the movie for you? God. Oh, I've seen it before. I just couldn't oh, been so God. long. I don't care. <laughs> That would that would have been bad. Yeah. I don't care. So if you were planning on watching that movie, sorry, oops, we don't care. Um, anyway, we're we we're, we are watching it with two of my friends from college, Dan Sliman and Rachel Keel. I am really hoping Rachel Keel is a musician, hoping that she will do a rendition of one or more songs from the City of Angels soundtrack. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to talk to them. They've been really excited about doing this show as so much so that they've had their own little mini Nick Cage film series and rating in preparation for this show. Awesome. So bless their fucking hearts. Can't wait to have them. <laughs> um, that's it guys. Thank you uh, so much, Renny, for doing the show. You're oh, awesome. This was a blast. Thank you so much for, for letting me have a reason to watch a, watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> for giving me purpose during these it's- dark times. It's homework. I uh, must. It's fun homework. <laughs> it's like a job almost. Yeah. What's that yeah. like? I, yeah. I, I, Structure. Thank you for memories. <laughs> well, All we right. will be back next week. Thanks again, Ryan. Good night, everybody. Talks- Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank Goodbye. you. <laughs> oh, no, Chris. Are you? Am I still on the air? Tell me.